Hello and welcome to this next little exercise on a test for independence. So here we're looking to see, uh, we're going to test whether or not there is a dependency between the political party that a person votes for and their gender. So our null hypotheses uh, in this case, as in any problem for a test for dependence, is uh, the null hypothesis is that the two variables, our column and our row variable, so in this case political party and gender, are independent of one another, and the alternative hypothesis is that they are not independent of one another. So that's straightforward. Here's our level of significance, alpha, 0.05. So the rest of this exercise, if you've watched some of the preceding videos, uh, it's very, well, it's the same for all of these tests uh, in this module. We need to calculate our expected values, and then we need to calculate our chi-squared uh, test statistic. So the expected values, again, I'll write out, so let's see, these are the observed values. Here we'll fill in a table of expected values. And this is, again, the row i total times the column j total divided by the total number of observations. So for the first one, let's just go through, we'll fill in this cell here. So this is the male Republican voters. So I want the row total, so that's the total number of men times the number that voted for Republican divided by the total. So at this point, again, if you've watched some of the other videos, these calculations are all the same. Get this out of the way. So this is going to be 91 times 99 divided by 197. So 45.7. 45.7, oops, 45.7, the next one now would be 75, 99, always the same denominator, so 75 times 99 divided by 197, so 37.7, the next one, now we're looking 31, 31 times 99 divided by 197, 15.6. And then we come down to the next. We're going to go back to the Republicans. So we use the relevant column again. But now our row is different. Now we use this row total, which is just 98. So 91 times 98 divided by 197, 45.3. And the next one, now we're using 75 here, so get rid of that. We're using this 75, whoops, 75 times 98 divided by 197, 37.3. And finally, the last one, 31 times 98. 15.4, good. That was relatively painless, and we don't even need these. We can do those as a double check just to make sure that everything worked out because we should get exactly the same totals as we do up here. But let's just keep this, uh, keep this short and sweet to this video. So we have all of our expected values. Now we need to calculate our test statistics. So this chi-squared we need the differences between those observed values, the expected values, square them, divide by the expected value, and then add those across all columns and rows. So again, it's the same formula that we've seen in a few other exercises uh, in this module. I'm just going to give myself a little bit of space here. I want to be able to see those observed values, still observed frequencies. So let's... Uh, Let's crunch some numbers. So here first I'll do the male Republicans. So there's my observed value and my relevant expected value. So this is 48 minus 45.7 
There's our difference. We square it. We divide it by the expected value, 45.7. And we have, so let's just round it to 0.12. So 0 0.12. Now the next one that we're going to do, we'll just come down and we'll look at the women. So that's 43 and 45.3. So 43 minus 45.3 squared divided by the expected value 45.3, 11.6, or 0 0.116 I should say. Aye, the silly eraser. Well, sometimes my eraser thinks it's a pen. Okay, there we go. Zero point, let's just round that to 0 0.12 as well. Yeah, that can round to 0.12. Okay, and the next one, so now we'll come up. Here's my eraser gonna work for me this time, good. So now we'll look at the male. Uh, oh, why do I have Republican written twice there? This is a typo. This should be Democrats. It's a silly mistake. So we're we'll looking here, this uh, observed and this expected value. So 36 minus 37.7 divided by, th oh, we didn't square it. 36 minus 37, what's happening? 36 minus 37.7 squared divided by 37.7. There we go, point, let's call that just 0 .08, 0 .08. Okay, so we have to do this three more times. I'm gonna skip through some of these. I've already got the answers uh, here in front of me. I'm gonna put you to sleep if I make you watch all of these calculations. So we've got the first three. Now we can go through. I've got the next one is also gonna be 0.08. The next one would be 0 0.02 and 0 0.02 again. So that's going through all six of those pairs of observed frequencies and expected frequencies, taking those differences, squaring them, dividing them by the expected value or the expected frequency. And now we just have to add all of those together to give us our chi-squared test statistic. So this is going to be, get this out of the way, 0.12 plus 0.12 plus 0.08 twice plus 0.02 twice. And that gives us a test statistic of 0.44. Okay, so there we've got A and B done. Our test statistic is 0.44. Now let's go ahead and draw a conclusion, find our p-value. We can get a critical value here as well. Uh, how many degrees of freedom do we have? Well, our critical value for this test when we're doing these tests of independence, we have uh, the product of n minus one and m minus one degrees of freedom. So it's the number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. So here I have two minus one rows, three minus one columns, so that's one times two. So we just have two degrees of freedom so alpha is 0.05, and we have two degrees of freedom. So if we go to our chi-square table, two degrees of freedom, alpha is 05, critical value is 5.99. Okay, so 5.99. Our test statistic, our rejection rule is we reject if our test statistic is larger than that critical value. Here we have a test statistic that is certainly smaller than our critical value, so we do not reject. So based on the critical value approach, we do not reject. It appears as though these two variables are independent. So the political party that an individual votes for is independent of their gender. Let's uh, get our p-value for this, at least a p-value range. So 0.44, my goodness, that's, well, the best we can do is just gonna be somewhere in here, I guess. 
So the p-value is going to be something between 0.1 and 0.9. So a pretty wide, wide range. So our p-value something less than 0.9, greater than 0.1, probably closer to the 0.9 in, in that range, but still it's certainly greater than our level of significance. Uh, so again, that confirms our conclusion. We do not have enough evidence to reject that null hypothesis. So it appears as though political party choice, preference, and gender appear to be independent variables. Okay, that's it. I hope that that was helpful. We're going a little bit fast because I know these calculations, they're the same for both types of problems that we've looked at now, and it's going to be the same for the next batch of problems that we look at as well. So you get lots of practice with this formula here. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.